Now we're going to start working with Entity Framework itself. And for that, we're going to create a class called Products Context. And the purpose of the context is to provide a connection to the database. And it serves as a link between the application and the underlying database. Let's use the new namespaces, adding a semicolon after the namespace, and we'll clear the using statements that aren't being used as well. And this class needs to inherit from the DB context class, which is a class provided by Entity Framework. Inheritance is a concept in object-oriented programming. And if you don't know what it is, basically it means that this class that I'm creating, products context, is based on another class. So it's going to have a parent class and it needs to implement its methods. And it's important to dive deeper into the context of inheritance before you advance in Entity Framework. But for this beginner tutorial, you don't need to know much about inheritance to be able to follow along. The context represents a session with the database and it allows you to query and manipulate data. So to declare that a class is inheriting for another one, we need to add the colon and the name of the class that's been inherited, which is DB context. And we can use this squiggly line that we can see here to install the packet for entity framework. So we don't even need to go into the NuGet package manager. We can download it directly from the code. So we can choose find and install latest version. And we need to add the namespace. And in our case, it's Microsoft.entity framework. And then we need to declare as a property of this products context class, a DB set field, which also comes from entity framework. And in summary, it represents a database table. In our case, it will be a table of products, which we haven't created yet. Now notice that DB set needs a type to be declared. And we have this product type with the squiggly line. And this is because this product class wasn't created yet. And this product class that we're going to create will serve as a model that represents a table in the database. So it has all the characteristics of this table. So let's see how we're going to create that. So the class was created and we are also cleaning up by using the new namespaces and getting rid of the unused usings. And these models are comprised of properties that represents the columns in the database table. And for now, we're going to keep this model very simple. We're going to have only two columns, the ID, which is an integer and the name, which is a string. Next, we're going to use the onConfiguring method to declare the connection string for the database. And this is just one way to configure the DB context. And what's happening here is we are overriding this method. So this is a method that exists in the base DB context class. And we're going to call the useSQLite method of the options builder object. But for that, we need another NuGet package. And that's the any framework core dot SQLite. And we need to pass the connection string into this method. And the connection string for SQLite is very simple. All you're going to say is data source equals the name of your database. So we have everything we need in code to create a database, but we need another NuGet package. And this is the package that will allow Entity Framework to create a database. And that's the Microsoft.EntityFramework.Core.Tools. And once that's done, you can go to the tools in the top menu and choose NuGet Package Manager and Package Manager Console. And here we're going to run the command add migration with a custom name. And I'm just going to call it initial migration, but it's up to you how you want to call it. And your migration gets created and we can see that there is a new folder on the Solution Explorer with two files. And these are the initial migration file and the products context model snapshot. So migrations in any framework, they're just a way to manage changes in the database over time. So it allows us to evolve our database schema 
incrementally and helps us to keep track of it. So if you go into this initial migration class, you can see all the changes that are in this up method. We can see that a table is being created and all its properties and characteristics. We're not going to touch it in this tutorial, but this is a way to do minor adjustments to your migration whenever you want. And if we examine the products context model snapshot, we can see that it contains the current state of our database schema. By comparing the current state of the entities with the snapshot, any framework can identify which properties have been modified. And sometimes we will want to roll back any changes that we've done with the database schema. And the snapshot will allow us to revert the schema to its original state. So now what we can do is to run the command update database. And that's what will actually create a database for us. We can see in the solution explorer that the file was created. If you right click on that file, you can choose open containing folder which will take you to the file in your root folder. And there you can open your database and I'm using the DB browser for SQLite to execute this file. And when that's open, we can browse our table, which at the moment is empty. And that's it. Our database is created and in the next lesson, Let's see how we can insert data into it.